peace be with you. My name is Rodolfo Martin Vitanko, a Gemini. In this video, I will present to you the four gospel passages that made people falsely think Jesus is God. Is Jesus God? Nowhere in the four books of the gospel did Jesus directly claim to be God other than pointedly and repeatedly saying that he is the Son of God. There are three instances in the gospel where he clearly and directly identified himself a son of God. The first instance was in John 10, 36. Jesus said, Am I insulting God when I say, I am the son of God? The second instance was in Luke 22, 70. In chorus they ask, so you are the Son of God? And Jesus said to them, You are right, I am. The third instance was in Matthew 16, 13 to 17. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my Father in heaven. Notwithstanding the direct and repeated pronouncements of Jesus that he is the Son of God, many of his followers, notably the very church itself, believe that Jesus is really himself God. I find this very understandable since there are four passages in the gospel that would really make people think that Jesus is God. Unfortunately, it is a false thinking, which I'm here to prove. Here are the four passages that make people, including some of the so-called Bible scholars, falsely think that Jesus is God. Passage number one, John 20, 20. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God, let me recite to you the whole passage that made the Apostle Thomas say that. John 20, 26 to 28. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. 
though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Thomas' regard of Jesus as his Lord and his God is his and his alone, not of Jesus. For to Jesus, God, his Father, is one Lord. Mark 12, 28 to 30. A teacher of the law had been listening to this discussion and admired how Jesus answered them. So he came up and asked him, Which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. To Jesus, God, his Father, is the only true God, and he, Jesus, is but the only begotten Son sent by His Father to bring life to the world. John 17, 3 Jesus said, Now, this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Passage number two, John 10, 33. We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Let me recite to you the whole passage that made the Jews say that John 10, 25 to 33, Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep, listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has, given them, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Again, his Jewish, his Jewish opponents picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus said to them, I have shown you many good works from the Father. For weeks of this, do you stone me? We are not stoning you for any good work, they replied, but for blasphemy, because you, a mere man, claim to be God. Based on what I've just read to you, where did the Jews get that notion 
that Jesus is claiming to be God. It is when Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Did Jesus say, I am the Father? No. He only said, I and the Father are one. What is the meaning of I and the Father are one? The meaning of I and the Father are one is as I protect my sheep, so my Father will protect them also. For it is my Father who gave them to me. No one can snatch them away from our hands. I and the Father are one in our will of protecting our sheep and giving them eternal life. However, by saying I and the Father are one, it is more than enough for the Jews to mean it as Jesus claiming to be God. In other words, the Jews took Jesus' statement out of context. Did Jesus just keep quiet about it, implying that that is what he really meant? That he was also God, like his father? If you say yes, then that will effectively make Jesus a great liar. First, he is a liar for saying that his father is one Lord, when all along he, Jesus, is also Lord. Second, he is a liar for saying that his father is the only true God when all along he, Jesus, is also God. Third, he is a liar for saying that he, Jesus, is the son of God when all along he, Jesus, is really God, not just the Son of God. You would not think that Jesus was a great liar, right? So, to the question, did Jesus just keep quiet when the Jews accused him of claiming to be God, implying that that was he really meant, that he was God like his father? The answer is, no. Right there and then, he corrected the Jews. This is what Jesus said. John 36. Am I insulting God when I say, I am the Son of God? Can I repeat that? Am I insulting God when I say, I am the Son of God. You have had it. Jesus was very consistent about his stated being. His being is, he is the Son of God, not God, and that he is the anointed one sent by his Father into the world. Very clear. Yes. Passage number 3, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. If the Word here refers to Jesus, let us make substitution. Instead of using Word, we use Jesus. So, 
it will now read as follows. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. So, there are now two gods there in the passage, right? Who are these two gods? Jesus, who was God, and the God who was with him. But there is only one God, yes? There cannot be two gods, right? Suppose the translation goes this way. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was divine. That makes more sense now, yes? We are back to having only one God, and not two, yes? Jesus, like his Father, is divine. As the Father is divine, so the Son too is divine. As our Father on earth is human, so we too, the sons, are human. As the King is royal, so the Son too is royal. The Father the Son and the Holy Spirit are in oneness in their divinity. Passage Number four, John 1, 18. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only Son, who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the Father, has made him known. In the passage I just read, it is very obvious that Jesus is also God. I took that passage from the New International Version. But what if I take the passage from the New King James Version, which came out pretty much earlier than the New International Version? In the New King James Version, it is totally different. The following is the New King James Version's translation of John 1, 18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Can I repeat that? No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. In that version, Jesus is not God, right? He is clearly identified as the only begotten Son. I will tell you this. I find it more logical to embrace the New King James Version portraying Jesus as the only begotten Son of God, not as God the Son in other versions. You know why? It is John, the author himself, who cited Jesus declaring himself a son of God 
and not as God the Son. Therefore, John cannot go against Jesus, declaring himself a son of God, and then somewhere else in his gospel, he will identify Jesus as God. I believe John is faithful to, to Jesus' declaration that he is the Son of God, that any confusion that arises, like saying he is also God, comes not from his original text, but from the translations done by a great variety of translators coming from various sects and denominations. This stand of mine will be supported by John himself, where in a certain passage he clearly stated that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and where no other versions contradicted it and translated it the other way. That passage is in John 20, 30 to 31, and I read, Many other signs, therefore, Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in his book. But these have been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Every passage that talks of Jesus' identity in the book of John must be interpreted in the light that Jesus is the Son of God, not God, lest we make both John and Jesus liars. Let me put it this way. People say, you are the president of the company. And then one time, they ask you directly, are you the president of the company? And you answered, no, I am not. I am the son of the president. It is my father. Who is the president? Who must the people believe then? Those who say you are the president or you yourself who directly and pointedly say to the world that you are the son of the president? People must believe you, yes, unless they know that you are just lying because you are notorious for being a liar. In like manner, it would be utterly foolish for Jesus to alternate between saying in one instance, He is the Son of God, and then in the next instance, He will say, he is God. It's either He is God or He is the Son of God. It can never be both. Amen. If you want to see a new life, a life that you have never seen before. May I invite you to subscribe to this channel and walk with Jesus all the way to making his mission of life happen in our world. In the name of God, through his only son Jesus, I wholeheartedly thank you for viewing this video presentation. 
May the Spirit of God be always with you.